It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up live from the greatest city in the world and the city of brotherly love. This is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with the man with the plan, my father, and happens to be the chief investment officer of Payne Capital Management, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. We're actually in the studio together today. That never happens. I know, right? It's wonderful. I came up here at a 70-degree weather. The uh, baseball teams are in spring training. It's going to be summer before you know it. I know. You're going to blink, and uh, you'll leave your hideaway in Naples, and you'll be in your beautiful place at the Jersey Shore. So. That's a good point. Yeah, it's, it's time. I'm thinking New Jersey dreams. Jersey dreams are coming up. As I always say, it's good to be Bob. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about baby boomers and retirement. Bob and I are going to discuss some of the unique challenges you're going to face that your parents didn't have to when it comes to retirement. We're going to talk about our most important financial commandments at Paying Capital Management, or what we call Bobisms, that you need to apply to your planning and investing right now. And we have this week's financial pornography, a lot of stuff in the media that's just horrific that we want you to avoid. And on our spotlight segment today, we have our financial advisor, Jen Angel, on the show. She's going to talk about a real retirement plan she worked on, talked about some of the mistakes this couple made with their planning, so you can avoid that. So let's hop to it. we got a great show. Bob, let's talk about baby boomers and retirement. You're a baby boomer, aren't you, Bob? Yes, I checked, Ry. I'm a baby boomer, and uh, you know what? We're going to live forever. With that full head of hair, Bob, which everyone should check out at BeBullish.com. What is this? I don't care what color it is as long as I have it, right? <laughs> You're looking pretty good. Well, if you are a baby boomer, if you were born between 1946 and 1964, odds are you're getting closer to retirement right now or you're actually retired. In fact, Bob, there's about 10,000 baby boomers retiring every single day. I know. All my friends, all my clients, everybody but me, right? You just look too good, Bob. You're looking <laughs> a man who can't retire. <laughs> and would you say, you know, Bob, we work with a lot of baby boomers. What percentage of our client base would you say is baby boomers? Oh, I'd say it's close to 70, 75%, right? Yeah. A lot of, I would say, our clients are people that are, are close to retirement or in retirement now. And what would you say some of the more common issues that, that we see amongst baby boomers when it comes to retirement. Well, as a baby boomer, I know that uh, you know when you get into your 60s and your 70s, you know what happens? Your genes come back to haunt you. <laughs> that sounds terrible. It does because you know our biggest concern as baby boomers is our health because we're a generation that believed we would never age, that we would live forever. Right. And um, we're seeing a lot of our friends and clients have health issues. A lot of it has to do with your genes. A lot of it has to do with things that we did when we were younger, right? I mean, I remember going to the Jersey Shore, and they were telling me all about the beneficial tanning rays of the sun. And now we make frequent visits to the dermatologist, right? And cigarettes were healthy, believe it or not. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of, the biggest concern every baby boomer has is it's twofold. Number one is their health. And number two is how am I going to pay for any type of catastrophic health issue? It's kind of a double-edged sword because the one thing we do now when we run projections is we're going to look at, okay, because of modern medicine and because we're taking better care of ourselves, you're probably going to be retired a lot longer than your parents. I mean, we're looking at probably planning for 30 years plus for your retirement. And on top of that, because you're living longer, because you're retired longer, to your point, Bob, there's going to be health issues that come up. And statistically, if you're a couple over 66 years old right now, that could be over another quarter million dollars over your lifetime just to medical expenses, which can take a huge dent out of your portfolio. And that's why baby boomers fear that so much, right? It's like, is my insurance going to cover it? And if not, is it going to eat through my retirement portfolio? So it's a huge concern because I got to tell you, the majority of baby boomers that we do business with, yeah, they want to be happy. I mean, happiness is really what they're focused on at the last stage of their life. You know, it's like, I, I know my parents always to say, you know, the golden years aren't so golden, but the baby boomers, they, they really embrace retirement. They're looking forward to living longer. Yeah, you definitely have a different uh, outlook than your parents did. For sure. Yeah. 
the other thing that we find is too you know, a lot of the common mistakes yeah. that I find that you're making with your portfolio is look, you know, you're not 30, 40 anymore. You need to invest your portfolio differently now. You know, we see a lot of the same portfolios with more risk than you should be taking. Or on the other side, too much cash sitting on the sidelines and you didn't get invested after the big crash in 2008. And there's a third thing, right? Is two big letters, R-E. Two big letters, R-E. Real estate. Oh. Way too much real estate in every baby boomer's portfolio. It's an income sucking asset class. It doesn't generate return. It sucks the life out of your cash flow. Why do you love real estate so much? Why do baby boomers love it? I don't know. We love big houses, right? We all had the big big mansions. We love having big homes. Hey, look, it's it's like anything else. It's a luxury. And we, we have to look at it in a, in a portfolio structure. A Lamborghini's nice, but it's a luxury. A right. beautiful home's nice, but it's a luxury. It's not an income generating asset class. That's right. So you want to start to look at your expenses now, look at where you can cut expenses. Because again, retirement can last for a very long time. And the other thing I know we've been looking at, Bob, is what we find is when we look at portfolios on a daily basis is your portfolio is not set up to win for the next 10 years, right? The last 10 years, we had a deflationary environment where interest rates were going down and the U.S. was leading everything. And if you look at moving out the next five to 10 years, the portfolio you had the last 10 years isn't really going to do it for you. It's not going to be successful the way it was the last 10 years. Well, you know, portfolio strategy is about having a strategy. You have to rebalance. You have to make changes. Things go yeah. from undervalue to overvalue. You have to make sure that you don't have all overvalued asset classes in your portfolio. You know, trees don't grow to the sky, right? Yeah, exactly right. And that's why you have to say, okay, what's happening now that wasn't happening the last 10 years? And we talk about this a lot, but being globally diversified is critical now. The rest of the world is growing and you're going to need growth in your portfolio. You have to have things like international in your portfolio. Well, you know, not just that. I, I went to lunch the other day with a client. You're not going to believe it, but the uh, waiter wouldn't take Bitcoin or relative performance <laughs> of my large cap growth portfolio in payment. You have to have cash flow to live in retirement. You have to have cash flow to enjoy yourself. And that comes from fixed income investments, which you need more of when you're in or near retirement. Yes, the biggest mistake you're making is you need to have something more reliable than hoping the market goes up every year. And that's why having a portfolio that generates a lot of consistent income is a critical component to a portfolio that you're gonna need when you start thinking about retirement or you're retired. And a lot of people are scared of volatility this week, right? Because interest rates are going up. That's a good thing. You know, we want higher rates. We want more income. You want your bonds when they come due to get a better rate of return, not a lower rate of return. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, I'm getting close to retirement, I'm retired. I need a plan that's gonna capitalize on what the next 10 years look like. I need a portfolio that's going to get me retirement ready. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan. And we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review. When we look at everything, we're going to go ahead and build you your own personalized portal where you can view all of your assets in one place, bring in all those statements from all the different financial institutions where they're held. We're gonna do a full portfolio x-ray. We're gonna look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. We're gonna show you how to increase or optimize reliable income on your portfolio. We're gonna look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio? Is your portfolio still look like it did 10 years ago? You need to adjust for retirement. And we're gonna look at fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? There's a lot of hidden costs in investment portfolios on those annuities, those insurance products, mutual funds. Bob and I are going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together. We're going to determine, is your money going to outlive you or are you going to outlive your money? Utilizing strategies now, our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So here's your opportunity. Give us a call or text us at 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you've saved at least 200000 for your retirement, our team will run for you your own personal total financial master plan. No obligation or no cost, but you got to call 844-752-6692. Call or text us at 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne. I'm with my son, Ryan Payne. We are no pain, 
No Gain Financial Radio. When you reflect on your life, what would you like to see as your fondest memories? Summers at your favorite vacation spot? Ice cream with the grandkids after their first t-ball game? Maybe it was your great adventure across the world or volunteering with a nonprofit. Of course, those memories are still in the future, although they're not as far away as you might think. Be sure you have a financial plan to make them happen. Don't find yourself worrying while enjoying that ice cream. Peace of mind is attainable in your retirement. With the proper planning, you can secure a meaningful retirement. At Payne Capital Management, we can help you make those dreams a reality. Schedule your visit with our team today. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. We want to make memories with you. Get started by calling or texting 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Officer of Payne Capital Management. And the global markets finished little change this week as prices continue to adjust to rising interest rates and an uptick in inflation expectations on the part of investors. One of the key reasons not to be overly concerned is that the earnings-driven stage of the secular bull market still appears to be alive and well. You know, lost among these headlines about the return of volatility and inflation is that the fourth quarter earnings season's been extremely strong. And this is before the real impacts of the tax bill take effect, considering that bill wasn't even passed until late fourth quarter. Furthermore, our current 2018 bottom-up consensus operating earnings estimate for the S&P 500 is up to $156 per share. Now, two months ago, we stood at $145 per share. That's a 7.6% increase in earnings expectations. Well, what's that mean to you as an investor? It means the P.E. ratio, the price to earnings ratio for the S&P 500 has actually fallen to 17.4, which is just above historically normal. So stocks aren't a concern. What you should be concerned about are your bonds, especially if you own bond funds. Our definition of fixed income is very simple. Bonds with permanence and definition which is a bond with a fixed rate of return and a stated date of redemption. In other words, your downside risk is limited to the return of all your money with interest. Better yet, as rates rise, you can reinvest your maturing bonds at a higher interest rate. So stay invested, buy the dips in your stock portfolio, and reduce the risk in your portfolio by owning a portfolio of high-quality fixed income bonds that come due. If you're wondering, do I have a properly diversified portfolio that will give you a higher probability of success? Why wonder when you can know? Call or text us today at 844-752-6692. Planning for retirement shouldn't feel like rocket science, but it's easy to get lost in the financial jargon. Every seventh conductor being connected by a non-reversible tremi pipe to the differential girdle spring on the up end of the gram meters. Let's clear up the confusion. Back to Ryan and Bob. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I are simple men, and we want to keep it simple for you. That's why we come up with very common sense, practical advice that you can use week to week for your own planning and investing. And that's why we put together our newest guide, the highlights of the new tax reform, which you can simply access by texting the word bullish, that's B U L L I S H to 555 888. Simply text the word bullish to 555 888. You can get our access to our newest guide, it gives you all the highlights on the new tax reform. Simple document, give you some simple advice. Simply text the word bullish to 555 888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And in this segment, we want to talk about some of our, I would call, financial commandments here, Bob, at Payne Capital Management, which we affectionately in-house call Bobisms. <laughs> you, know, you have a lot of sayings that are tried and true that work in probably almost every single market. Well, the reason it works, Roy, is because the markets repeat themselves. I mean, they don't repeat themselves exactly the same, right? They say that history repeats Not exactly, but it often rhymes. Yeah. So one of my favorites is it's okay to be wrong, but not okay to stay wrong. (laughs) I like that one. And what does it mean, Bob, 
to uh, that it's okay to be wrong, but it's not okay to stay wrong. Well, because when you're wrong, hope is not a strategy. You know, you have to take action. Right. And there's so many instances. I mean, if I go back over my 43 years, so many times where I've seen people just be so wrong, and unless they correct it, you know, you're never going to achieve your goals. I mean, let's take back uh, 40 years ago when you were born, son. You're gonna you're turning 40 this week. Let's not remind everyone. <laughs> well, I'll never forget that the first thing I realized when you were born that uh, it was going to cost a lot of money to educate you. So I went out and I invested in a 14 and a quarter percent zero coupon treasury bond. I would love to get 14% today, but those days are long gone. Well, I had a large pension fund as a client back then, and they wanted 14 and three eighths. <laughs> Can you believe that? Unbelievable. So you stayed, yeah. this particular pension fund stayed in cash for about 10 years waiting for an eighth of a point. That was wrong. And the problem was when you stay wrong, you know, you don't achieve your financial goals. What I think about is the perfect example is 2008, right? Oh, yeah. There's a good chance you had your money invested aggressively, bam, all of a sudden you saw your portfolio drop by 40, 50%. And all of a sudden now the market recovers and it's gone higher and higher now for nine years. About 258% for nine years. <laughs> so from the bottom of the market to today, it's 258% up and you have money sitting in cash and you're still waiting for the next shoe to drop or make a move. And I feel like it's almost like being between a rock and a hard place. And I understand that, Raya. 2008 was a very emotional time. I mean, came after another big drop in 2000, all of a sudden people feel like they're getting their brains bashed in and they don't want to take that risk any longer. So, yeah. you know, you're sitting there thinking about all the other things that could go wrong. Inflation, runaway inflation. I mean, our baby, we talked about baby boomers in the last segment. Every baby boomer lived through hyperinflation, high interest rates. You're sitting there thinking it's going back there. It's not. That was a once in a lifetime time when that happened. Yeah. So you're wrong about that. What you have to do is accept you know, what's going on right now. So people are worried about inflation, high interest rates, crash in the market, you name it. But the point of fact is, if you build a portfolio based on your dreams, on your goals, you're going to have the highest probability of success. Yeah. And I think it comes down to just thinking practically, right? It's You have this fear of, okay, I put the money in today, the market's going to crash on me tomorrow. If I put my money into bonds, the fear is if interest rates are going to start going up, my bonds are going to start going down. So you, you feel like there's just nowhere to go. But you know, we have an old saying, another Bobism, it's time in the market, not timing the market. And what that really means is it doesn't really matter when you get in. It's really about having your money in for a long period of time. It really is. And it also another Bobism is don't wait for the market you want, invest in the market you have. Right. I mean, everything's priced to exactly what the value is at that time. It's a very efficient market because there's millions of people making decisions at the same time and the markets are extremely efficient. So trying to anticipate what's going to happen often ends in tears, right? Oh, it's crazy. We always say anticipation is a terrible investment strategy. And the other thing we talk about a lot that I think you really have to get your arms around is it's not really about the market going up and down, but it's about income. And income over time invariably is going to drive your return. It's the fact that if you own investments in the market, you own bonds, it generates current income that you can live off of or you can keep reinvesting back over your portfolio. And over the long term, it's, that's where most of the return comes from, is the income you collect on your portfolio. That gets missed a lot when you're building your portfolio and you're thinking about building it for retirement. Well, that's the problem. You know, When people think about income, they think about stodgy old bonds, where big income comes from dividends. And dividends have been increased almost every year of your life. So you have something that's going to overcome inflation. That's why stocks are an inflation hedge, because they overcome inflation by increasing your yield. And that's another Bobism that comes into play here. Don't confuse brains with a bull market. Right, exactly, because the market's going straight up now for nine years. It's not because you're smart. No offense. <laughs> yeah, no offense at all. But uh, the fact of the matter is, you could pick the same stock in a bear market and lose money. So stock speculation isn't investing. You know, it's gambling. Yeah. What you want to do is build a diversified portfolio with income that you can compound. And when you have a diversified portfolio, you know, it cracks me up, right? People talk about the market. Which market are you talking about? U.S. market, international market, the bond market, commodity market. Right. There's so many markets you can invest in. And if they're all going up at the same time, you have the wrong portfolio. Yeah, I think we have to think about is you don't want your portfolio based on, we said, anticipation, meaning you think this is going to happen next because no one really knows what's going to happen next. So what you want to really look to do is build your portfolio is what we call, Bob, an all-weather portfolio. You want to own everything, right? There's a good chance 
For example, inflation is going to start to go up. The wages just started going up this year. Mm. Interest rates are starting to go up. So do you have something in your portfolio that protects you against that? And the two things we talk about is having commodity exposure, which a lot of you don't have in your portfolio, and not owning bond funds, but bonds that come due. Because if rates go up, those bond funds that you own, you're not going to be real happy well, <laughs> all of a sudden. So here's an anti-Bobism, right? What's that, Bob? The trend is your friend. The trend is your friend, meaning that you just follow when the market's going up, and then you're going to know that magical day to get out when it's ready to go down. So let me tell you what a real Bobism is about that. Tell me. Past performance is 100% indicative of past performance. So that means if I look at a fund that has a hot track record, did really well, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to do well in the future. No, all it tells you is that it did well. Performance has absolutely no predictive power whatsoever. And that's a great point, too, because just because your portfolio might have done well the last eight, nine years doesn't mean it's going to do well the next 10 years. And that's why you need to readjust your portfolio because you know the dynamics have really changed, Bob. We have inflation now. Uh, we talk about this at nauseum, but now we're starting to see the overseas markets do better than the U.S. markets. Emerging markets are the best performer this year. Well, we're in a global synchronized bull market, son. Yeah, and so you have to think to yourself, is my portfolio going to capitalize on that, or do I have the portfolio of the last 10 years? And this is a mistake we see very often, is you don't adjust your portfolio at the times, and that's the difference between a good investor and a bad investor. So if you're thinking there, some of these Bobisms play into what I'm doing or what I'm not doing, you know what we'd like to offer, if you're one of the next few callers and you've saved at least $200,000 for retirement, Ryan, I will answer those questions. We'll run for you a total financial master plan. We'll introduce you to our 360 financial portal, which will take a holistic look at your financial situation and your total financial plan. We're going to review your taxes to make sure you're not overcharging yourself from the IRS. We want to be certain that your estate plan is titled properly. So many of you can make a mistake by not changing the beneficiary forms on your retirement plans or not contributing or taking advantage of the matching that your company so generously provides. But lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to take all of your investments, regardless of how you custody those investments. You don't even have to tell us what they are. You can take all of your statements as they come in for February, stick them in a shopping bag, and come see us. We have offices in New York. We're down in Bluebell. You know, we're in Philadelphia. We want to meet with you to make sure that you have a portfolio that's built to win. We want to be certain that you have the three core elements of a successful strategy. Diversification, across asset classes and within asset classes. Fees. I can't believe how many people overcharge themselves by diversifying with too many custodians. And income. You know, you're going to need a lot of income in your retirement years. Income is much more predictable than capital gains and much more dependable. Finally, we're gonna tie it all together into one customized view and answer that age old question, are you gonna outlive your money or is your money gonna outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my son and I have now been working on for over four decades. That's correct, 43 years we've been helping families like yours get from point A to point B, your goals, your dreams, with the highest odds of success and the least amount of risk. So don't waste time. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Get a full holistic review at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Call or text us at 844 844- 752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. It's time for Financial Pornography of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. Bob, what'd you find out there this week in the uh, horrific world of financial pornography? Well, before we get to the media, right, I just can't let this moment go by without celebrating your 40th year <laughs> on God's green earth. I mean, Oh boy. Can't tell you how old I feel knowing I have a 40-year-old son, but I have a question for you. 
What is the first movie you remember ever going to see? Oh, wow. If I remember correctly, I feel like the first one had to be Star Wars. Wow, what a classic. What a great movie to see as a... Who I forget how old you were when I took you to the movies for the first time. <laughs> he would have been about 25, I think. 24, 25. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I don't know. Maybe a little older than that. I was impressed with what a great movie it was. Can't imagine what it was like for a young guy like you. Oh, yeah. No, it definitely. Star Wars was, it still feels ahead of its time in a lot of ways. So, Well, the force yeah. is strong within you, son. <laughs> That's, maybe. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yes. <laughs> so what did you find out there, Bob, in this week in the, the world of financial pornography? Well, you know, actually, it was a very helpful article because it ties into something we were talking about earlier about my generation and our affection for real estate. And there was a great article written in realmarkets.com about what a horrible investment your home happens to be. Yes, I think you have sent that one to me as well. We think that our home is this great place to put money. We're going to make a lot of money holding real estate over time. What were your findings, Bob? Well, you know, I just go back to our your home where you grew up in over the years back in Pennsylvania that I sold uh, just two years ago. And I thought, I, you know, geez, I, I bought it for X amount of dollars and I, and I thought I made a lot of money. Right. But then I went back and I remembered when we put the gym in and then we redid the landscaping and... You know, then all the finance charges, you know, when I bought that home back in the late 70s, right, the mortgage rate was 22%. Wow. Of course, I got a great deal. I got an adjustable rate at 11 and a half, and I thought I was, you know, stealing money at that point. (laughs) That's amazing. But, you know, think about all those amortization costs. Real estate costs went up every year. I actually had to go to the township, you know, to negotiate down my real estate taxes because they just adjusted up. And if you don't pay attention, you end up overpaying your taxes. Yeah. And not to mention when you sell, you got to pay a 5 6% commission to the broker to get out of it. It's just the costs add up, and you probably want to update the decorating every 10 years or so. Uh, you're talking about your mom. <laughs> <laughs> that costs you a lot of money on a lot of houses, Bob. Well, we went through the blue phase and then the yellow phase, and now we're in our pottery barn neutral phase. You know, Your mom <laughs> loves to decorate, but it does come out of after-tax dollars. Yeah. And if you look at it over time, and we think even if we have a lot of appreciation, once you factor in what we call the carrying costs on owning real estate, your return goes down a lot over the years. And that's why one of the things we talk about as you get close to retirement and retirement, and we see this a lot with our clients, it does make sense to start looking at downsizing some of your real estate because the cost to carry it becomes very cost prohibitive. Well, especially with this new tax law. I can't deduct as much as I could on interest. I can't deduct the interest on a secondary home, and I only conduct so much on my taxes. I mean, it's all of a sudden, some of the tax advantageous reasons for having big chunks of real estate doesn't make as much sense any longer. And it turns out, you know, over a 30-year period of time, it looked like I made about 1.5% a year. Ouch. That's a very painful, no pun intended, (laughs) return on something you thought you were killing it on, right? Yeah, especially since I've averaged 10% a year in equity for 40 years. It looks like a really bad decision. To give you such a beautiful home as a young child. (laughs) Why, thank you, Bob. I thank you for that. And that's also what I love, too, when we build our 360 portal, is you can load in everything in there. We can look at all the expenses that you have. We can look at all the different accounts that you have. And nothing's better than playing what if. You can say, well, what if I sold the house, and instead of that being a liability now, I generate income on that on that amount of money that's locked up in my home. And you can start to see what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. Because that's one of the more powerful tools I think we have is just being able to log into one place, not having a thousand logins, seeing your entire net worth, and being able to run projections on you know where you are now and where you should be. And I think it's something that we all need to do, especially as we're getting closer and into retirement and update it often. You know, you as a baby boomer, we all have done the same things like, well, how are other people my age doing? So you actually can see there's a correct ratio of home ownership to portfolio assets that we see in all the cases that we run. And that's one of the reasons you should look at this is to see if your ratio of real estate to your liquid assets is proper. Yeah, because I get that question a lot too. It's like, well, when I get into retirement, I'm going to have all these real estate properties that I'm going to own, generate all this income and live off of it, which sounds great. And we talked this in an earlier segment, but that's what we call sweat equity. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to be a landlord in retirement, you know, like you said, Bob, my bond portfolio doesn't call me in the middle of the night <laughs> to fix the plumbing. <laughs> well, speaking of plumbing, son, since I grew up in a plumbing truck with your grandfather, You don't want me fixing your plumbing. (laughs) I'm not a very good plumber. (laughs) (laughs) Duly noted, I remember when we were kids, you know, your equivalent to uh, fixing things in the house were picking up the phone and calling the repairman. (laughs) Yes, um, at least it would get done properly. 
So that was uh, that was interesting. So what else did you find this week out there in the financial media, financial pornography? Well, I found a very interesting statistic through Morningstar. And Morningstar is a company that does a lot of analytics on mutual funds. And apparently, right now, the average mutual fund has over 2.4% sitting in cash. So when you put money into a fund and you think it's invested in stocks, a lot of times that money's just sitting in cash and it's not invested in the market. And this is probably one of the reasons, Bob, we talk about this and we're not a big proponent of owning mutual funds is because they tend to underperform over time. I and mean, one of the reasons is they sit with a lot of cash in their portfolio. What yeah, it's gives? Really, it's, well, it's really not their fault because when you invest in a mutual fund, you decided to co-invest with thousands, hundreds of thousands of strangers that you don't know. And you know, just recently we had a 10% correction in the market. A lot of uninformed investors panicked and sold. And if you're in that mutual fund where they're panicking and selling, that's why the mutual fund manager's got to keep cash in the account to pay the people that are panicking, even though you're sitting here saying, you know, I'm a long-term investor. I bought this for the long term. Why is my portfolio going down because of strangers? Yeah, I always say it's like you're in an elevator with a lot of people you don't like when the <laughs> elevator is going down and you're trapped on that elevator with people making bad decisions. You know what I found interesting, Ryan? Mutual fund managers are now buying the ETF or the underlying index in order to keep some liquidity in their portfolio, not to keep as much cash. So, you know, why buy the mutual fund when the manager is buying the underlying index that's actually doing better? Yeah, it's like, I'll buy it for you, and I'm going to charge you a lot more money to do that than you just buying the, what we call the new school, owning exchange-traded funds in your portfolio versus the old school, owning mutual funds in your portfolio. You got to go with the times, and this is just another reason why mutual funds, Bob, are, are not the place to be anymore. Well, they're not. I mean, it's your father's portfolio, right? Your mom and dad's portfolio. It's an old school way to invest. It's a high, expensive way to invest, and when you're in a big booming bull market like we've been in Rye our whole lives, it's impossible for any human being to outsmart the market. The market's smarter than everybody. Yeah. You know, what you really need is a strategy to stay invested. I mean, look, we're all average normal human beings and you are motivated by fear and greed. You need a strategy, you need an expert to help you with that strategy to keep yeah. you invested. That's exactly right. And if you're thinking right now, I need a strategy to stay invested. I need to know what fees I'm paying on my portfolio. I need to know exactly where I am with regards to my retirement goals. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan and we'll do it with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we're going to take everything that you own, bring in all your statements. We're going to load it into a personalized portal for you so we can see things holistically. We can run what-if scenarios on if you sell that real estate, when you can retire, how much money you can live on in retirement, what pitfalls along the way. And we're going to do a full portfolio x-ray. We're going to look at everything. We're going to look at fees. Do you have a lot of high cost mutual funds in your portfolio, annuities, insurance products, brokerage products? We're going to break down all the fees and help you reduce the cost on your portfolio. We're going to look at income. Income is critical in retirement. You need a reliable income source. Bob and I are going to show you how to optimize the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What pitfalls do you have in your portfolios? Is your portfolio set up for the next 10 years, not the last 10 years? We're going to show you how to be prepared with an all-weather portfolio. Then finally, we're going to tie it all together. We're going to determine, are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies we've been perfecting now for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Why put your financial future at risk when you can know? Give us a call at 844-752-6692. You can call us or text us at 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers and you've saved at least 200000 for your retirement, we will run for you your own personal total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached. But you need to call or text 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne. I'm with Rye Payne. We're the pain of no pain, no gain, financial radio. We told you earlier that Bob Payne is the Managing Director of Payne Capital Management. This means he oversees all of the portfolio designs and financial planning strategies for the firm. For 40 years, he's worked to change the way the financial industry approaches financial planning. 
He turned away from the traditional Wall Street sales pitch and pioneered a new approach to retirement planning using goal-oriented, customizable plans that better fit your individual needs. Reach out to Bob and the team for a complimentary review by calling or texting 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Let's see what people are saying about those other financial guys out there. I wish you could just shut your big yapper. Looks like you'd better stick with us. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I want to educate you. We want to make sure you make the most informed decisions when it comes to your retirement and investing. So that's why we put together our latest guide on the highlights of the new tax reform, which you can access for free simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Get our newest guide on tax reform at 555-888. That's text the word bullish to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, you can do that. Simply go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. And yes, Bob's hair is real. It's not a toupee, <laughs> for the record. If you ever have a question for myself or Bob, you can always email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. And Bob and I will answer your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we'll answer it right here on the show. And like every week, Bob, we got a couple pretty good questions. I like it. The first one comes in from Olivia. She's in Radnor, Pennsylvania. She writes in, Bob, I just inherited a very large sum of money from my dad that I wasn't expecting, and I thought I might get 50000 but it's more like 10 times that. Good job, Olivia. Nice. I've been diligently saving for my own retirement, not counting on anything like this, so I don't even know what to do with it. What's the most responsible way to handle it? Well, first of all, Olivia, I'm very excited for you because I just, again, had my rich uncle died the other day and I owed him $500. So <laughs> inheriting five times, 10 times what you thought you were going to get is not a problem. And, you know, the best, the most responsible way to handle it is so simple. It's as simple as A to B because you've been saving diligently for your retirement. So all this does is change point A. You now have 500000 more at point A than you did before which means you can be much more conservative in your investment strategy. And that's always the right thing to do. Yeah, and I, I love that story from back in the day where they interviewed Shaquille O'Neal when he was at the, the top of his basketball prowess. Yes. And an interviewer was asking, Shaquille, you know, what do you do with all that money you're making right now? You're making money hand over fist. And he says, I got all my money in T-bills. And T-bills being one of the most conservative treasure bills, that investments treasure bills. you could be yeah. in. And the inverse said, really? You know, all the places you could put your money, it's all invested in T-bills. He said, look, he said, I have more money than I'm ever going to need. I just don't want to screw it up. And I thought that was a great response. Yeah, really good response. But you know, there is a, it is prudent to make sure that you're overcoming inflation and you're yeah. overcoming taxation. So someone like Shaquille or Olivia could benefit from high quality, double A rated municipal bonds, especially an institutionally priced double yeah. A rated bond portfolio where you have someone reviewing the quality of those bonds. Because you know, when it comes to bonds, Rye, what's most important? Having your money come back. You don't want to lose your principal. Return of your money is more important than return of the money. So Olivia, all you have to do is look at your financial plan. Now you might be able to retire earlier. You may be able to live more comfortably. You certainly can, you know, change your, you know, your goals. But I wouldn't do anything really radically different other than get more conservative in your investment process because now you'll have less downside risk, less stress. You'll probably live longer. Yeah, and I think that's the thing we forget is you know, you work hard accumulating your wealth. You just don't want to screw it up. So why take unnecessary risk? And I think right now is a good example. We're in a nine-year bull market, and I look at a lot of times the portfolio that you have in place it's probably more risky than it should be. And it's like, why take the extra risk? Why have the extra headaches? And I think that's why it's important to run those numbers and figure out how much risk do I really need? Because if I can get less, I'd like to take less risk if I could. You know, Rye, like you, Olivia is just asking that question. Am I taking too much risk in my portfolio or not enough? It's so hard for the individual investor bombarded by all this information to know 
when you can run a 360 financial portal, look at your projections, look at your goals, and see how each one is tracking exactly towards your goals, not yeah. someone else's, not your neighbors, not your friends, not your sister or brother, your goals. You know, that's what creates happiness, knowing you're going to succeed. You know what I call that, Bob? What's that called, right? Financial therapy. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Just call me Dr. Yeah. Payne. <laughs> Dr. Bob. Dr. Bob. Next question comes in from Hugh. He's in Brooklyn. He writes in, Ryan... Aren't the costs involved in setting up a row of individual bonds with all kinds of set maturity dates expensive and time-consuming? In addition, there will be expensive brokerage costs in buying and selling those bonds. And won't all bonds, regardless, show a loss in the short term if interest rates go up over the next couple of years? And this is a good question because you've heard us speak a lot about not owning bond funds, but owning your bonds individually. And the question there is, is is it too expensive to buy bonds individually, Bob? And that's why we use what we call institutional management. Yeah, I think it's important to understand that all financial investments are really like products on a shelf. And when you go to a, a Merrill Lynch where I used to work and used to work, Rye, or I remember. you go to a Fidelity where we custody our clients' assets now, you know, they have products on the shelf. And like anything else, when they put bonds on the shelf, they got carrying costs. So there's big what we call spreads are actually costs. There's overhead costs. So, yeah. you know, that question is spot on. That's why when we buy bonds, we buy them as collective, right? You can buy them retail or wholesale. What's cheaper, right? It's always better to go on the wholesale level. It's kind of like you going to Costco versus your local shop, right? Or Acme, if you're in Philadelphia, to buy your, your essentially your, your bonds. And it's well, a huge it comes, difference. When it comes to buying bonds, it's even better than that. It's, it's like the supplier to Costco when you buy on an institutional level. And, you know, I don't care if you have $200 million in the eyes of Wall Street, you're a small retail client. You know, collectively, we buy bonds as paying capital management. We buy as an institution. We get prices that you can't get as a retail client, no matter how much money you have. And you get access to bonds that you never see as a retail client because Fidelity, Merrill Lynch, and all these places don't have enough money to keep all those bonds on the shelf. That's right. Yeah. So going blindly and having your broker buy you bonds is, you don't even want to know. It's kind of like, you don't see how the sausage is made. Because no, <laughs> it's usually sure. going to be the worst bonds out there at the highest price. And that's why an institutionally managed portfolio where you own the bonds outright is by far in our career, Bob, the best and most conservative way to buy bonds. Well, it's not just that, Ry. As former registered representatives of a great firm like Merrill Lynch, we know that any advisor at a firm like that doesn't have any facility to do bond analysis. They don't they don't have the access to the information that an institutional bond manager who doesn't do anything but buy or sell bonds all day long that uh, you know anybody sitting in a retail desk at a bank or a brokerage firm just doesn't have that information. So they might buy you a bond that's high quality when they buy it, but if it goes to junk rating, <laughs> you'll never know about it until you get the bad news in the mail. Perfect example. I just had a client who bought Atlantic City bonds, which you can imagine they were a great buy when he bought them, but now they've just they've dropped down in price dramatically because no one was watching them. Absolutely. And same thing. You know, you look at companies like GE. I mean, GE was a great company, but what happened to them? Right, so it's the same risk buying an individual bond or buying a individual stock. You need some professional management, and of course, buying wholesale is always cheaper than retail. And if you'd like to know how to buy bonds or invest in bonds in a wholesale level, what we'd like to offer once again, if you're one of the next few callers, we have a few spots left, and you have at least two hundred thousand saved for your retirement. My son and I would like to offer you a opportunity to have your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. And if you're one of the next few callers, we're going to review your tax return with our CPA partner. We're going to look at your estate plan to make sure it's not an IOU to that dreaded IRS. I think we all pay enough in taxes. And lastly, we're going to look at all of your investment statements, regardless of what financial institution you custody those assets. And we're going to break it down into our famous investment analysis spreadsheet. This is a simple three-page document, which will give you a view of your entire portfolio, and it'll analyze the three key elements of a successful portfolio, diversification, cost, and income. You want to be fully diversified. A lot of times you have overlap in your portfolio. You don't want to pay an inordinate amount of fees. It's a lot of hidden costs in portfolios that are buried deep in the prospectus of that mutual fund or in that big, thick annuity prospectus, which nobody ever reads until you go to court. And lastly, that income. You want to be sure that you have dependable cash flow in your portfolio. Many, many times you can increase the income in your portfolio by reducing the overall risk. 
Lastly, we'd like to tie it all together for you into one total financial master plan utilizing strategies that my son and I have now been perfecting for over 40 years. We want to help take your family from your point A to your financial point B, your goals, your dreams, with your values, with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as a fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text us now at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers with over $200,000 safe for retirement, get the full review. Call or text 844 752 6692. That's 844 752 6692. It's a full holistic review. Call or text 844 752 6692. That's 844 752 6692. This is no pain, no gain financial radio. From your first encounter with the Payne Capital Management family, you'll notice a difference. First of all, the team doesn't represent any institutions. They represent their clients. That's the power of being independent. They really separate themselves from the large brokerages and how important their personal relationship is with you, the client. You can expect frequent communication about your plan from the team. You'll have the freedom to select top investment strategies, not just one particular product. And as a fee-based financial advisory group, Payne Capital Management embraces its fiduciary responsibility to help you make decisions that serve your best interest and no one else's. See what the PCM difference is all about. Call or text today for a complimentary review. 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio, and Bob and I want to educate you to get our latest guide on the highlights of the new tax reform so you're tax ready this year. Simply text the word BULLISH, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555-888. You can get our latest guide, get the updates, know where you are for taxes this year. Simply text the word BULLISH. To 555-888. And now it's time for my favorite part of the show, our spotlight segment, where we look at a real retirement case and we look at the flaws or what we call pain points. That's P-A-Y-N-E for the record. And we have a special guest on the show today, Bob and my colleague, Jennifer, financial angel, financial superstar. Good morning, Jen. Hello, guys. How are we? Couldn't be better. <laughs> now we got the, our financial angel here in the, sh- in the studio. So I worked on a case this week, and it's this couple in their early 60s uh, about to go through a very huge transitional period. So he's in the medical field and about to sell his business. So going from working his whole life, really concerned with, okay, what am I going to do with this big influx of cash, basically? Mm-hmm. Um, and not going to have very much income going forward, you know, except for Social Security, potentially. So he said, okay, what am I going to live on? And really, one of their big hot points was giving back in retirement. And they really wanted to live a sustainable lifestyle, make sure that they're giving X amount to charity every year. So he really wants to live on, make sure his money's working for him because he wants to give back a lot. Yeah, and that's going to be kind of scary. I mean, when your your business is your main asset, that's where you've been driving all your income for your entire life. And all of a sudden now you're selling this big yeah. nest egg that's essentially been what's been covering you. And now all of a sudden you're going to rely on putting that money into a portfolio. That's a big transition. Yeah, the other thing is when you're running these projections, that's the beauty of running financial projections. You can run what if scenarios. You know, what if I give X amount of dollars to this charity? I know from my clients that when you retire or when you sell your practice, a lot of people are always asking for more and you want to do more, but you have to know is it going to sustain me in retirement because I can't go to work and make it up every day. Yeah, one of the um, we kind of planned on is, okay, let's say you have X amount in retirement assets. We can take a portion of that and kind of offset that with charitable distributions and offset any income we have to take in the next you know, 
at least in 10 years when you're 70 and a half when you have to take those required distributions. So I said, okay, let's do some planning on if you want to make these charitable deductions or contributions anyways, let's take it now um, or a little bit each year so it'll lessen your income at 70 and a half. And those are all the things that we can plan for. And then talking about, okay, what are we going to do with this you know, kind of big lump sum of cash when you actually do sell the business. And that was huge. Yeah. And I noticed that you put in here because all of a sudden he has this small account that's going to become a very big account because he's going to have all this cash come in from their business on top of this little account that he has. And in this case, it looks like it's at uh, one of the big financial institutions and he's paying a lot of fees on that account. Yes. <laughs> and that's the and hidden fees. You have to actually, you broke down and saw that he's paying over one and a half percent a year in fees and he probably has no idea he's paying that, and now he has more money, he should really be entitled to see his fees go down. Exactly. You know, fees going down along with higher cash flow is just going to be huge, especially for someone who is looking to kind of make this huge adjustment in their lives, you know, going towards this kind of income for the you know, past 50 years he's been working, and now he is going from that to basically nothing at all. So making sure your investments and your cash is working for you is going to be huge. So just with our portfolio, increasing the cash flow by almost over $35,000 a year. And that's just going to be his spending money that hits his, you know, what he can go out and spend living his sustainable lifestyle with and a much slower pace, obviously, now that he is fully retired or about to be. So he was really excited to see just that income going forward. And I love looking at that because it's like, okay, here's another $35,000 a year, over $60,000 i am looking at you're going to create in retirement income has nothing to do if the market's going up or down. And that's the key, right? You want to have something that's reliable because when you're working, you have this paycheck coming in all the time. You want to replicate that when it comes to retirement. And when we back tested his, you know, he's currently in a lot of individual stocks. So we back tested that, and he would have been down about forty percent or a hundred thousand in a two thousand eight situation. Oh, so if you you had a million dollars and it goes down forty percent, you'd have six hundred thousand dollars after two thousand and eight, and that could happen again. Yeah, especially in retirement, you don't need that. <laughs> You know, Jen. So the key to portfolio management is to have a a diversified portfolio strategy. And one of the problems that I see in this case, and a lot of cases, are when people pick their own stocks, they tend to reach for yield. And that strategy could have worked well in the last ten years, but one of the Bobisms is past performance is one hundred percent indicative of past performance. Right now, in this particular portfolio, there's a lot of underperforming individual stocks. And there was a stock this week, which doesn't happen to be in this portfolio, but all they did was cut back their dividend and the stock dropped nearly in half. So one Ouch. of the things you don't want to have in retirement are a lot of individual ticking time bombs. And I think the beauty of your portfolio proposal here is that beautiful, diversified, high quality, double A rated institutionally priced bond portfolio. Bob, I learned from the best. <laughs> <laughs> is that your mom? <laughs> yes, my mother and from Bob Payne. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so having this diversified portfolio, income going forward, and lower fees is just going to be huge, especially for this particular couple in retirement going through this huge transitional period where you're no longer working and you need that income. Yeah, well, well done. As Bob says, another financial masterpiece by Jen, financial angel. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> and if you're thinking to yourself, I would like a review like this. I want to know what I can live on in terms of income. I want to know what fees I'm paying. I want to know about my diversification and risk. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next few callers, we have a couple slots left and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself, Bob, and Jen will run for you. Our total financial master plan will do it with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review. We're going to take every statement you have. We're going to load everything into one personalized portal so we can do a bird's eye view and we're going to see where you really stand with your retirement goals. We're going to do a full portfolio x-ray just like this. Can we increase your income? We're able to increase the income on this portfolio by over $30,000 a year. Income so critical in retirement. We're going to look at diversification. What risks do you have in your portfolio? If the market pulls back, are you going to go down 40%? We're going to show you how to protect your portfolio. And we're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in your portfolio, mutual funds, annuities. We're able to reduce the cost on this portfolio by over a percent a year. We're going to show you how to do the same on your portfolio. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to tie it all together and we're going to determine, are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? 
utilizing strategies now myself, Bob, and Jen have worked on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Don't miss out. Give us a call or text 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved at least 200000 for your retirement. Our team will run for you your own personal total financial masterpiece with no obligation or no cost, no strings attached, but you need to call or text 844-752-6692. Another fantastic show this morning. Great, Jen, to, to have you on the show. Always honored. Mm, pleasure's all mine, guys. Big Bob, great to have you up in the big city this weekend. Well, it is, Ryan. We're going to uh, break out the peanuts and Cracker Jacks with spring training and celebrate somebody's big 4 0. Don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> have a great weekend, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.